Hello, everyone. It's 12.02, so we're going to begin the presentation now. So I'm going to ask our presenters to, uh, to get ready, and we'll move on to the first slide and settle in, and uh, hope you're going to enjoy this. Welcome to Cabin Systems North America Ask Me Anything event, better known as an AMA and made famous by Reddit. My name is George Cholas. I'm the founder of Agoracom, and I'll be your host for this event. Before my brief introduction of Cabin, I want to thank each one of you who has taken the time to join us under the circumstances in which your families continued vigilance, safety, and health until we can all get through this. Turning my attention to Cabin, I can't help but note how timely this presentation is. Specifically, the issues of online privacy and data protection had already become very serious over the past couple of years, beginning with Facebook's data privacy scandal and leading to the implementation of GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, two years ago. GDPR is essentially EU law on data protection and privacy that strongly addresses the transfer of personal data. The primary purpose of it is to give individuals like you and I control over our personal data by regulating all international business that handles our data. That was followed by the California Consumer Privacy Act, which became effective January 1st, 2020. Together, these two laws will have a significant impact on companies that collect and process our personal data, especially those in social media, online retail, digital banking, cloud computing, and healthcare. So why is this cabin presentation so timely? If this was January 2nd, 2020, I'd say this presentation is timely because the two laws now being effective mean big companies can't simply trade and profit in our data anymore. They need new business models. And that would be enough because Cabin, in its simplest form, turns the problem of data privacy into a profit for individuals while providing big businesses with new and compliant models. How they do it is what you're going to watch and learn in the next 30 minutes. But as you do, keep in mind what actually has changed since January 2nd. COVID-19 has driven deeper online than ever thought imaginable. And though we'll eventually move back into the public, consensus is that levels of online engagement will remain very high as people become more accustomed to carrying on big parts of their lives online. This new paradigm will put data privacy and opportunities to the test in ways never thought possible back on January 2nd. And Cabin stands to be a big potential beneficiary because it specializes in continuous online identity verification not just identity verification, but continuous, as well as identity management and monetization. And now you know why you've been personally invited here. I believe it will be a great use of your time. At the very least, uh, we've given you a much needed excuse to close your door for the next 60 minutes. The format is gonna be a 30 minute presentation, watch only mode, followed by a 30 minute Q&A in which you can submit your questions via the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. After that, we'll have a wrap up and let you know how to reach us. As a side note, as many of you know, Cabin has announced that it's engaged in a proposed business combination or RTO deal with Torino Power Solutions, the symbol is TPS on the CSE. Cabin and TPS's shareholders have both approved the deal and the companies are waiting on approval from the CSE. The companies have made all the necessary filings. So if you want more information on the progress or discuss participating in the financing, please contact your financial advisor and or cabin directly after this presentation. Now we'll move on to our disclaimer so we can begin the presentation. As you can see in front of you, this is the company disclaimer. You should have received a link to this and other items with your invitation. If you haven't read it, please feel free to go offline and click the link in your invite and rejoin the conversation if necessary. And now I'm happy to present the team who will be presenting Cabin to you. David Lukacs, he's a co-founder and president. Ben Kessler, CEO. Michael Konikoff, Chief Revenue Officer. And RJ Reiser, who's the company's Chief Business Development Officer. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you, George, really appreciate it. Hi, this is David Lukacs. And uh, I'd like to welcome everyone today and, and thank you for joining us. And I want to let you know how it all started. It all started with an idea in late 2017 and Cabin North America was born in mid 2019. The first thing we did was assemble a great leadership team, advisory committee 
and board of experience driven and highly qualified people that have been successful at previous endeavors. I want to let you know that this is not our first rodeo tackling big problems. One example of this is in, that in the late 90s, we developed the online credit card and payment solutions for Visa and MasterCard, where none previously existed for the Canadian market. The solution we built was a major game changer, and we've been involved with others, but with Cabin, we all feel that the opportunity is even bigger, and we're here today to tell you why. For Cabin, it all starts with a simple statement. At Cabin, we believe that ownership of identity is a basic human right and individuals should be the primary beneficiary of any use of their identity. Everything we do and everything we build and deploy into the marketplace is based on this simple but powerful philosophy. Cabin is in the business of verification, management, and monetization of online identity. These three principal tenants make individual identity both unique and valuable. We estimate that in the current marketplace today, there are about 60 recognized companies that provide identity service verification, mostly to commercial clients who want to verify a customer. All of these companies are transactional, or almost all of them are transactional, meaning that if John steps into a bank to be verified, the bank will call on a service to verify John and create a profile. But when John goes to another bank or another commercial operation and needs verification, he has to do it all over again. And that pattern repeats because 95% of our competition is transactional. Cabin changes all that with a unique business approach. So it's our team and our business approach that creates reusable bank grade verified identity. We put the value of identity into the user's hands not the commercial ecosystem, making it easy for a cabin customer to share their verified identity over and over again, just like you do in the real world. As we step into 2020, and like we did in the late 90s, the world is going through an evolution. And so many things that we do going forward, as George mentioned, and as a society and world are changing, and things will never be the same. And we look at identity as part of that. So I wanna talk a moment about the changing landscape and our competitive value. So there's a lot of um, different areas of, of FinTech and, and I'm sure we all appreciate that, that it comes in different forms, whether it's banking, identity, data management. These are just a few examples of what we're seeing in the marketplace when it comes to certain valuation. The sectors are growing rapidly and at the end of the day, most of the value is placed on data. That's the new gold. When we look at digital banking, which Ben Kessler, our CEO, will talk about a little bit later, we see that cardholders um, are valued somewhere in the range of about $1,000 US. And in some cases, that can be even higher. So any bank that has a single cardholder or multiple cardholders, that general multiple is about $1,000. Recently, Visa paid to acquire Plaid, a fintech data company, $5.3 billion dollars. They collect data on what you spend and where you spend. Trulio, which is a Canadian company that does traditional uh, verification of identity, Goldman Sachs helped raise them $70 million recently. And just a few weeks ago, Intuit, major company in the US, decided to buy Credit Karma for $7.1 billion. And if you look at Credit Karma, what do they do? They give away free identity scores. And what they do is they profit from the back end value of the data. So that really gives you an idea of where the landscape is going. But we want to talk for a moment about why digital identity matters. And this is to us the important factor about our business. And we don't want to talk to you today about technology. We want to talk to you today about solutions and opportunities. And I'm gonna give you a simple example of what you do every day. Now, none of us probably do it today because we all get to sit around the house and our sweats and we don't really spend a lot of time going out. But when we do, we generally take two things with us and we might carry that in our coat, in our pants pockets or potentially a satchel or purse. What we do is we carry a wallet and we carry key rings. 
those are the two key things that we and, and obviously in our wallet or elsewhere we probably have some cash on us but at the end of the day those two items your wallet and key rings form the basis for your identity your wallet contains all kinds of information both public and private about you you might carry business cards you might carry pictures things that you'll share privately and things that you'll share publicly like your driver's license insurance and credit cards on your key ring you're going to have keys many of us will have keys to vehicles offices um, home uh, maybe a bank uh, vault there'll be different keys for different purposes that is the way that we think of identity as as in containers contained in elements that that we can easily access and determine who we need to share what with and when with and some of those keys will open up opportunities for us to create value and cabin's job is to help us help our customers create value and share in that value and and we use id every day i mean you know but we don't really use it online very often but that is changing you know and id to us is is probably one of our most valuable assets like time it can be tangible and profitable if managed well I've already told you about the cabin believes that the ownership of identity is a basic human right and that you being the owner of that identity should benefit from it and that everything we do is built on that philosophy but identity is what makes us unique but since the inception of the internet digital identity has been a clear afterthought with today's acceleration of online commerce, education, healthcare, government, and other services, digital identity and the data that surrounds it is online gold. In the conventional world, it's easy to prove who you are by either visual or traditional identity verification. It's a process that most people are, are easily accustomed to. But in the digital world, it's not easy to prove you are you. Identity verification is managed on a site-by-site -site basis having to do it all over every single time, and users are required to deliver sensitive documents to unknown third parties, potentially compromising the value of their identity and future value of, of, of that data, and potentially leading to the risk of identity fraud. I wanted to share something with you. According to a recent McKinsey report on identity uh, in the digital age, digital ID can also unlock value by promoting inclusion, formalization, and digitization and with digital id they estimate that 90 percent a customer onboarding costs could be potentially reduced by using a digital id so imagine that if you had a single sign-on process where you never had to remember a password again you never had to go in and get credentials it was all managed by your wallet and or your key ring so again we've talked about this Everywhere you go and everywhere you do online creates a trail of breadcrumbs. It creates cookies. You know, companies are benefiting from the things you do and the data you generate. Just search for something and boom, every other site you go to has ads for the items you recently searched for. Yes, in some cases, Big Brother is watching you. However, Google recently announced that within the next two years, they will be um, excluding third-party cookies or third-party trails to things that are not their own because it breaches privacy rules. Up to now, corporations have benefited from that data, but we believe, shouldn't you be the ones that benefit from the data? We really think so, and so do many governments, as they're changing the way privacy and data is dealt with. George touched on this. There's been huge changes in Europe, California, which we believe will extend to eventually to the rest of the United States and in Canada. People not corporations should manage and receive value for identity and its related data. What's our approach? As we mentioned earlier, we've totally reinvented the way I, digital identity is created and verified. By creating reusable bank rate verified identity, we've put the value into the hands of users, not the commercial ecosystem, making it easier for a cabin customer to share their verified identity over and over again Again, just like you do in the real world. By introducing this disruptive model to a traditional industry, we've had to change our value proposition and, and business model. And while we still offer commercial verification services, just like our competitors, each customer, each individual gets their own cabin ID 
And that gives them the power to manage and control that information, their personal and public information, and share with whom they want, when they want, and how they want. They own it. So what we did was turn the process upside down, solidifying a unique business approach that give customers all the power over their digital identity and data, putting it exactly where it belongs. Cabin's business process is to give away tools to consumers to help them better verify, validate, and manage their digital identity. And then to bring them offers based on aggregated pools of public data and that these public, this public data, we can create a matching offering engine so that we can offer our users things that they want to need in a private setting through a single application. This makes it easier for a user to control what they want to see, when they want to see, and how they want to see it. And this is all based on public data. We do not ever rent, sell, or give away any data. We just create relationships. And an example of this would be really simple. For anyone who uses Uber today, um, my, and those that are in the Vancouver area who have joined us, they know that Uber's new. But for Uber to get to a large population, it would be easy as Cabin grows to ask Cabin to identify those users that might be suitable for Uber. Uber could create a unique offering for Cabin and its users because we know public information based on their private identity. And we could deliver to those users, never directly from Uber, an offering that they can look at and they can, they can decide if they want. Uber would pay us a fee for providing the offer and a bounty if the offer was accepted. That's the way we look at it. What's really interesting about the digital identity market is it is applicable for 100% of consumer businesses, consumers and businesses in the marketplace. It's really amazing. There's not many products out there. So our reach is 100% of the population over the age of 13. Now, why we say 13? Because most privacy laws are based on that age. Overall, it's estimated that 90% of the US and Canada's population use the internet and use it regularly. Given these stats, we estimate that about 300 million people are primary to our market in North America. Today, as George mentioned, the digital market is for identity is fairly nascent. But as we predict, with, as we did with e-commerce, then in just a few short years, this will accelerate. And given the current macro environment, and we're seeing this more and more, um, that this will become a vital and even mandatory service to the market space. So think about some of the sectors that digital identity is applicable to. Imagine you could reduce identity fraud because if a transaction was about to happen, Cabin uses biometrics and other technologies to make sure that you are you in a transaction. So it's not just a digital identity of, 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 of information, but we also combine that with biometrics like your face or voice print or thumbprint, making sure that you are you. So we could reduce potentially credit card fraud from a $30 billion industry down to a negligible industry. You know, again, combining that with purchases and validation for e-commerce, the e-sport and online gaming industry, we're already seeing a massive traction there for two reasons. One, anywhere there's a tournament, you want to verify the people are who they say they are. And for opportunities like online gaming and social networking, we can create value propositions that extend beyond the individual game with users that are affiliates of our system. So if we work with a gaming client, we can work with their constituents to provide them with um, cabin ID. And from cabin ID, if there's any revenue generated, we can share that. So that extends the reach of these opportunities. Information data services, fairly self-explanatory. We're creating tons and tons of data. Education, we're already involved in, in proposing pilot solutions for some of the um, education ministries, because we believe that you know, people who take and want to get academic credit should be the same people that are taking exams. Government, voting, there's all kinds of applications. And healthcare is a massive opportunity, not just in Canada, but when you think about the US, the healthcare system is very different. And we have a key advisor on our team that is a patient advocate 
um, uh, spends a lot of time in Washington, and they've and and Leslie's been very helpful in in helping us understand that. There's many many more business opportunities, but those are just a few that we can identify today. So I want to talk to you a little bit more about something new that we've just um, launched. It's called a liquid avatar. So how does liquid avatar reinforce our digital identity approach? Again, making us very different. We're not a competitor anymore. We're a complementer. So we can work with Ontario's EID program, digital ID. We can work with things like Royal Bank's digital identity. Um, secure uh, key. We can work with all the competitors out there that are already providing digital ID and we can put those digital IDs on a private key ring that if a consumer needs to access that through their liquid avatar, they have direct access to use that over and over again. The cabin ID makes that liquid avatar user a unique identity user in our pack, uh, on our program and we can also allow them to share their cabin ID. So again, like a traditional passport wallet and key ring, Liquid Avatar is the next generation of consumer-focused digital identity management. You know, by storing information securely outside of the user's phone and tablet and using biometrics, access and control, the user can decide who sees what and when. And again, what's really important is we don't just use digital identity, we also use biometrics. Those key indicators make it easy for a user not to have to remember all their passwords, not to remember certain data. They can store that securely and access that through their liquid avatar and their biometrics so that they don't have to remember every password that they have in their system. What we're doing with liquid avatar is we are mimicking what you do in the real world. And we're going to show you a quick demo of liquid avatar. Hopefully everyone can see this. This is the prototypical app. We're building it now, but this is, this is uh, an early version. So using an app, it will be available for Android. It'll be available for iOS and you can use it directly on the web. And uh, so you can create an avatar. So we start by creating an avatar. So you, obviously you want to pick, you know, male, female, neutral. You don't want to be a robot and, or I want to upload an image. So I want to start with an image. So we, we pick something. So in this case, we're picking that we're a female character. We can build using high-end graphics, we can build an image that looks like ourselves. Shape of face, nose, eyes, ears. And in fact, we can go to full body and we'll, we can talk about that later, but, but this is a huge opportunity for us to, to move forward. And you can change your liquid avatar as, as you go. And once you save it, you're then prompted to enter a cabin ID. Now, if you've through one of our commercial operations already have a cabin ID, you can log in immediately, or you can create your own cabin account. Or in some cases, you may want to move forward without verification, which will limit your use of a liquid avatar. So in this case, I'm going to log, we're going to log in with our cabin ID. And since it was a female character, we take a, uh, Jane would take a, a live selfie of herself to verify against our records. She's already signed in with cabin ID that, that this is Jane. Now her dashboard appears and her dashboard controls what she gets to see on the app. She can manage her avatar, look at her community. She can uh, interact with some of our own products and services like our Pegasus flight card. Uh, and she can view offers, read her avatar and share. So let's manage Jane's avatar. So J as you can see on the image, Jane's avatar also comes with something below it called a dot code. And that dot code provides information that I want to share or Jane wants to share with the world or privately with each individual. That will show you how to read that, but that dot code can be read and can be authenticated for private transactions. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so Jane can manage her key rings, which means she can manage who gets to see what, when, and how. And Jane can also manage other aspects about gamification like badges things that Jane is interested in. So Jane can turn badges on and off, tell people what she's into, what she's not into, and she can select how she has that displayed, and then she can display it. So the, the image not only displays your um, avatar, it also displays some of the things you're interested in, maybe some badges you've earned or achievements, and it provides verified information that you can share with others. 
So now we're gonna show you how to share this. So just like in social media and anything that you've used in the past, pick where you wanna share it. In this case, we're gonna talk about sharing it through email. Jane clicks her email and it automatically embeds her liquid avatar and she can send it off to whomever she wants. Now in this case, she may have shared it with, uh, with Ben. So, you know, she goes to the community and, and, and she clicks on Ben, who's somebody she's already shared something with. And Ben's information shows all his public information and any private information that, that uh, he's previously shared with Jane. So Ben doesn't have to type in anything. He doesn't have to give Jane any of his social media links. He doesn't have to do anything. And if Ben was signing in or Jane was signing in to a website, we'd automatically authenticate that website either directly directly or indirectly we can authenticate a website password entry on a private databases again by using your face and your liquid avatar so that's the way that you'd share if ben, if jane wanted to read um a, a liquid avatar so she saw a liquid avatar on a on an email all she does is click the button takes a picture of the liquid avatar and ben's information is automatically in the app she absolutely in immediate access so you can see the personal applications for this the business applications and products like our own which ben will talk about like our pegasus flight card we can have mobile banking solutions directly embedded into the app and we can also embed offers so everything that is unique to jane and jane receives his offers from cabin is all available online or through our app and michael michael konikoff our cro will talk about that a little bit more and that's really the basis of the way the app works. So I really wanted to, you know, give you a quick demo on our app and, you know, thank you for, um, for listening to us. And again, what we're doing is we're mimicking what goes on in the real world. So we'd like to thank you. And I'd like to pass over to Ben, uh, the CEO of Cabin to uh, continue. Great, thank you, David. Um, David highlighted our cabin ID and liquid avatar solutions, which are not only critical for, but form the anchor for our financial services use case. Um, we realize that one of the most significant challenges in financial services is to quickly and efficiently validate and verify a person's identity to know who you are. Within financial services, it's called KYC or know your customer. Um, think of KYC as a user identity and verification process. And then a second part required in the financial services sector specifically is called AML or anti-money laundering. And you can think of that as a user check required uh, to prevent suspicious transactions by the user. It's, it's a screening against terrorist watch lists, uh, sanction screening, and, and basically other criminal lists. Um, anyone who has opened up a bank account invested traditionally or even dabbled in digital currencies um, are familiar with the headaches of going through this part of the onboarding process. And so in part this frustration led to the recent growth of online and digital bank startups called challenger banks. David mentioned some of those earlier and at the beginning of the webinar uh, but you may also have heard of some of them um, like Revolut, N26, Chime in the US, or Coho in Canada. And the problem is, according to John Davies, who's a, a subject matter expert in payments, he's also a deputy chair of this Emerging Payments Association, is that these challenger banks can boast of the millions of customers that have signed up in a rather uh, short period of time, and also the high valuations and the high lifetime values associated uh, with these customers, which David mentioned earlier. But do they truly know who these customers are? His answer is, of course they don't. With Cabin ID and Liquid Avatar Solutions, we actually do know. Um, if you take a look at that second bullet, in terms of who are the target demographic for our financial services use case, millennials and Gen Z rule. Today, millennials represent approximately 50% of the North American workforce and spend over 600 billion annually. Millennials have a tremendous distrust for brick and mortar financial institutions, and they want to control their own identity. They also want to spend their money when they want, how they want, 
and where they want. And they want to do that under their own terms without unreasonable fees and rules. And, and they're very focused on rewards and the value of their online presence. Effectively, everyone online is their own influencer as they create value for themselves. A few other points I just want to mention with respect to millennials and North, the North American market. 70% um, of North American millennials are interested in digital payment services that can give them better understanding and control of their personal spending. And even further, by 2022, 75% of millennials will be digital banking users. And so that's why it's so exciting that Cabin received approval uh, to launch our Pegasus Flight Visa Card and Banking Wallet program in Canada, which addresses both digital and fiat programs positioned to millennials, Gen Z, and, and even some late Gen X. And so uh, according to a recent uh, report from Payments Canada, cash transactions in Canada declined 40% in volume over the last five years. Canadians continue to adopt digital payment channels such as contactless, e-commerce, and mobile, which now represent 73% and 59% of both total payment volume and value respectively. The Pegasus Flight Visa Card program is unique as it ties directly into cabin ID and liquid avatar solutions that David covered, allowing everyone who's verified and passed by cabin in Canada to be eligible for the Pegasus Flight Visa Card program. This significantly reduces acquisition, implementation, and onboarding costs, and creates potentially sustainable revenue and marketing streams for cabin. And just as another note, uh, the expansion of the card program to the US is currently under discussions. All Pegasus Flight Visa card holders will also be entitled to participate in Cabin Cash, Cabin's Cash Back and Loyalty Program, as well as other feature programs, which my colleague Michael will talk about shortly. And finally, let me just touch on the last point on that slide, which is key. It is that financial services and banking not only generates transactional revenue, but it also generates a tremendous amount of data. As we build out our ecosystem, the value of that data grows. It's online gold, as David mentioned earlier. It's why Visa spent 5.3 billion on acquiring Plaid, a FinTech data connector, as David mentioned earlier, and why Intuit spent 7.1 billion for Credit Karma, which is really a free credit service for consumers, uh, but does generate a wealth of financial service data on the back end. So with that, let me quickly turn it over to my colleague, Michael Konikoff, who will talk more about the loyalty engagement use case and the respective data play. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Cabin Cash is our loyalty and engagement platform, uh, which includes a cash back and card link program and integrates with our banking wallet. Cabin Cash is a fundamental driver of cabin revenue as it not only enables online and offline transactions with uh, Pegasus Flight Card, it is also designed to engage non-cardholder users of the cabin platform. This is a traditional use of accumulating consumer data and driving engagement. And it also enables the consumer to control their own use of the program via where they earn, where they spend, on their own terms, and what information they would like to see within their experience within our system. We are following the traditional deployment of engagement that you would find in financial institution, mass retailers, and even frequent flyer programs. By understanding how our customers interface within our community, we can continuously provide our consumers with a pristine and exciting experience. In addition, we can ensure that we are maintaining not only relevance, but driving people to come to our multiple points of interface to engage with the program. We do this by providing relevant content, exciting shopping experiences, unique and valuable offers for both merchandise and experiential experiences like events and travel. It should be noted that consumers prefer a single self-contained ecosystem for shopping online. And we also know that 69% of all millennials in particular fall into this category. The key driver of our engagement protocols is data analytics. Throughout, we are capturing data based on transactions and activities and are used to understand and drive, that are used to understand and drive consumer behavior segments. 
This enables the personalization of user experiences and offers. Throughout the customer journey, Cabin will be capturing on an anonymous basis, just based on their Cabin ID, various sets of data based on transactions, geography, various points of engagements, responses to surveys, to establish key aggregates. By understanding individual preferences, we are able to personalize the experience, experience and keep the program relevant on an individual basis. A great example of this is the PC Optimum experience. As people shop within these two stores, all purchases are tracked and individual shopping behaviors are determined. When you go to check out using your membership card, they're able to put on the back of your receipt a relevant offer based on how you shop. They in turn realize high engagement with their members and see significant conversions, all the while driving revenue to their bottom line and keeping those customers happy, engaged and coming back. We too have the ability to personalize offers to raise the conversion levels. All this leads to incremental revenue lifts as we get a higher conversion on transactions within our system. These aggregates or segments become increasingly valuable over time to our clients and other third parties that would like to push unique offers to unique subsets of our membership. At this point, we'll be able to offer up this access at a premium price. It should be noted that communication to the individuals goes directly to their account profile within the platform, and we are not sharing or providing a direct link to the individual. If the individual converts on the offer, then the client or third party can establish a direct relationship with the individual at that time and independent of cabin. Engagement platform affects not only the individual customer's value, but the lifetime value of individual consumers. By being able to personalize experiences and maintain relevance, we will be able to monitor an individual's value to the program based on usage and then aggregate against other users. This helps us determine who our low, mid, and high value customers are, and in effect, enable us to understand the unique differences between each and determine the drivers that create the high value customers. With this knowledge, we can affect the overall lifetime value of our customers, which will be a key metric of success. The effect of our card link and cash back on, the effect of card link and cash back is to drive velocity and frequency of use of the Pegasus flight card and drive incremental revenue, fund, which is a fundamental principle of engagement. The goal here is to give each cardholder the reason to shop more and spend more. Just like an air miles program, the more you spend, the more you earn. Only in our case, the accrual is cash back on your card. We need to provide use cases for individuals to use the card within our environment to both increase the velocity of when they use the card and, and, and spend more on the card and then get them to use the card more frequently. This, uh, to this, we are deploying both our card linking for spend at POS and our online merchant mall, which will provide cash back to the card based on each qualifying transaction. Card linking enables us to link a special offer or a coupon to our consumer's prepaid card. These offers are available at participating merchants and are combined with the effective use of proximity marketing. As such, we'll be able to reach our cardholders at the right place and at the right time and drive them to current offers at local merchants where they are, a, where they are at any given time, based on where they are at any given time. Our merchant mall enables us to offer shopping, some of North America's biggest and best online merchants, and allows our users to earn cash back based on their spend at these merchants. In each case, Cashback is essentially a commission remitted to cabin that we disperse partially as cashback on the card, with the other part of the commission driving right to our bottom line revenue. All the while, we are capturing additional insight into our user spending habits. We've created the ability for us to white label our cashback platform for third parties to use. At this point, we have an LOI in place with one group that has close to 13 million users in their system. The net effect of white labeling is quite simply more users coming into our system to spend. This drives not only bottom line revenue, but increases our leverage to negotiate better commissions and deals with our online merchants. I now like to pass the mic over to RJ Reiser, our Chief Business Development Officer. Thank you, Michael. So my name is RJ Reiser, the Chief Business Development Officer. I'm also the new guy. I've been with the company for about two months but I've known Cabin for over a year and a half because I was with customer. After that, I've decided to invest in the company, 
And then shortly towards the end of last year, they asked me to come on as an advisor. And then two months ago, they asked me to join the team and I jumped at that opportunity. If you look at the little cartoon on the bottom right, it was in the New Yorker in 1993 by Peter Steiner. On the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. That is the main problem that we're solving as a company. And today, our digital identity platform that is proven, empowers users to manage their identity, and provides our clients with verified users for their online services. Today, we also have approval from Visa Canada for our debit card that will be plugged in to our banking wallet. Over the next 90 days, we have planned product releases for Liquid Avatar, Cabin Cash, and the banking wallet. This is the foundation to start driving the revenue and enriching the data around our user profiles on our identity platform. And we're also gonna to continue to push forward in the approval process for Visa. We all know and, and talk to it, data's king, it's the gold. That's how we're gonna drive our revenue. We've created a framework that we can compliantly manage the user data and, the, and their profiles. We don't sell, we don't share the data, but we provide a tailored experience for our users. We've structured our network so that we can leverage other networks outside of ours. We can build onto our network to improve that user experience and grow the knowledge and data that we have for all of our users. Our message is resonating. We can't go out and boil the ocean. We gotta stay laser focused. We have addressed a, a number of those in this presentation, the gaming, esports, education, healthcare, and loyalty. At this point, we have three executed LOIs that support our product roadmap that have the potential for millions of users. Please reach out to me if you guys have any questions, especially reach out to me if you guys have some business development opportunities. Thank you, and I'll push it back to David. Hi, it's David Lukacs again. Uh, I wanted to wrap this up a little bit for you um, because to some people, there's a lot to, to think about and absorb at the beginning of what we're talking about. We're talking about a, a number of unique opportunities all in one um, combined effort. And at the end of the day, again, Liquid Avatar is a no-cost solution for consumers. So a consumer never pays to get a Liquid Avatar or be part of the network. Our opportunity with a user or customer is to be able to help them verify, manage, and monetize their identity. And in that loop, we also receive value. So what's in our ecosystem? We've got our cabin ID and our cabin ID works with digital exchanges, financial services, web services, commercial clients, and our digital identity competitors, making us a complementer for digital identity. So a user can have multiple digital identities in a single liquid avatar, all on separate keys. And, and think of these as individual keys on key rings. We can have our financial services at Pegasus Flight. That includes card services, banking wallet, transaction services, and, and exchange services, and other growing a uh, list of growing financial services as the company accelerates. Cabin cash is a key way to the way a consumer receives value and, and we make revenue. So we can have card link partners, white label partners, e-commerce providers, and service providers. But what's also unique about our system is that we can have partners and affiliates in the social media um, area, esports, gaming, government, e-commerce, again, digital identity, web services, financial services, healthcare, education. What's important in our partner network is that they become originators or people or organizations or influencers that help us create liquid avatars. And they have an ability to extend their reach and receive value and profit for allowing their customers to be part of the liquid avatar and the cabin ecosystem. 
So I hope that wraps up a little bit about what we're doing and gives you a picture that Liquid Avatar is in the center and around that we have our core services and around our core services we have satellite services that create a unified network. You know, as we wrap up this portion of the webinar, we want to leave you with three top takeaways. It's always easy to remember three items. So we've tried to boil our business down to three items. We want you to remember reach. Digital identity is relevant to 100% of the online market and is vital to its continued growth. We've talked about that throughout the presentation and we believe it's the most important factor that our business can reach 100% of the online market. Two, we have a unique business approach. It's completely, and we've, we've designed it to be completely different and unique from what exists out there in the digital identity market that is transactional. Our solutions are built to empower users, not corporations, not our clients, and generate revenue and create stakeholder value for everyone in our ecosystem. Third element we'd like you to remember is that we have a really experienced team. Not only just our management team, but our, we have a great group of advisors and a wonderful board and all our seasoned executives from the technology, banking, payment, and loyalty industries that have had successful um, opportunities in the past and benefited from that experience. Thanks, David. Thanks, gentlemen. Uh, and for everyone watching and or listening uh, through Zoom here, thank you again very much for taking the time to participate. We don't take your time for granted. And we hope and trust that, in fact, it's been a great use of your time and looking forward to hearing more from you. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and, uh, and talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend.